An experiment is done to verify that the potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor if the temperature stays constant. And then we have four cells, each with an EMF of 1.5 volts, connected in series with an ammeter, switch S, and a combination of a resistor R and resistors of 4 ohm and 6 ohm, as shown in the diagram. And then we have voltmeter V1 and V2 that are connected across the battery and the parallel resistors respectively. Uh, the internal resistance of the battery and the wire are negligible. And then 10.1 says which law is represented by the underlined phrase. Uh, the underlined phrase is uh, the potential difference across a conductor is directly proportional to the current in the conductor if the temperature stays the same. Uh, we know fully well that uh, that is Ohm's law, right? So we have Ohm's law for 10.1 basically saying that V is equal to I multiplied by R uh, assuming that the temperature stays the same and then uh, we're given a table with a few values uh, and then 10.2 says uh, let's use the attached graph paper to draw a graph of potential difference versus current using the data in the table so we are now told that the switch is now closed and six resistors r1 to r6 each with a different resistance are placed in place of R, one at a time. The voltmeter and the ammeter readings are recorded, the result as shown below. So we have resistors R1 to R6 that are put in place of R, right? So they have different resistances, so we're going to have different total resistance and then different current. And then uh, on our table, uh, we can see the reading on the voltmeter is going up from R1 to R6. So that means that uh, they're reducing the resistance of resistor R, right? And then on the ammeter, uh, the current is going up. And then it makes that V is equal to I multiplied by R. So let's draw our VT graph. I don't have a graph paper, so I'm just going to sketch my graph here. So we have uh, the current on the x-axis. And then which values do we have? We have uh, 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1, and it keeps on going, right? And then the readings on the voltmeter at 0 0.5, we have 1.2, right? Uh, so that will be a point then. And then at 0 0.6, we have 1.4, that will be another point. And then at 0 0.8, uh, we have a voltage of 1.9. So there goes another point. And then at 1 amps, we have a voltage of 2.4. 2.4 um, at 1 amps, right? So we have something like that. So our graph will look something like that. So when you're drawing the graph, you have to do it for all the points, right? But then for the sake of time, I'll just do it for those four points only. And then 10.3 says, what does the gradient of the graph represent? So every time uh, when you have a graph, right, you should be able to derive an equation for that graph. Uh, we have voltage on the y-axis and we have current on the x-axis. And we know that we don't have any internal resistance, right? So we cannot talk about EMF. Uh, the only equation that we can use is V is equal to I multiplied by R. So clearly, there is no need to rearrange this equation because the voltage is already our Y and I is already our X, right? So the gradient will be our R, which is the resistance. So as a consequence, we're going to have y is equal to xm plus c, right? So clearly, uh, our gradient is the resistance. But which resistance? Is it R total, the resistance in series, or the resistance in parallel? It is the resistance in parallel because that is where 
our voltmeter is connected right it's connected across the resistors in parallel so it's the resistance of the parallel combination let's move to 10.4 10.4 is saying that if voltmeter v2 is only connected across the 4 ohm resistor how will the gradient of the graph change write down only increase decrease or stay the same so what is the voltmeter determining the voltmeter determines the voltage right so let's go to our sketch again the voltmeter determines voltage so when it's connected like that across the resistors in parallel it will be reading uh vp right but then now they're saying that the voltmeter is connected across the 4 ohm resistor what will it be reading when it's connected across the 4 ohm resistor it will still be reading vp right uh, why are we saying it will still be reading vp because we know fully well that in parallel uh, the current is different but the voltage is the same on all the branches right so the voltage so the voltmeter v2 will still read vp so v uh, will remain uh, unchanged right and then the current the current in our graph is being measured by this ammeter here right when you change the position of the voltmeter it won't affect what the ammeter is going to read right so v stayed the same i stayed the same consequently the resistance will stay the same and if the resistance stays the same the gradient of our graph stays the same because we're saying that the gradient represents the resistance so 10.4 stays the same and then 10.5 says uh, if the 4 ohm resistor is removed how will the gradient of the graph change right only increase decrease or stay the same right for the only way the gradient of the graph would increase is if we increase the resistance because we're seeing that the gradient is just basically the resistance so let's see what happens if we remove the 4 ohm resistor so the 4 ohm resistor has to go and then uh, if we remove the 4 ohm resistor then when the current flows in this path it will just go through the 6 ohm right no current will go through the 4 ohm. so we're going to have 6 ohm here having only that 6 ohm resistor there it means that the resistance is going to increase right because initially we had rp which is equals to uh, 6 multiplied by 4 divided by 6 plus 4 right uh, this is 6 12 24 so we have 24 divided by 10 so this is 2.4 ohms right but then now instead of 2.4 ohms we have 6 ohms right so clearly the gradient is going to increase because the gradient is representing the resistance so 10.5 uh, we have increased right if you have two resistors that are in parallel and you remove one the resistance increases so let's do uh 10.6 10.6 says calculate the resistance of resistor r3 using the values in the table so let's look at the voltmeter reading and the reading on the ammeter at i3 right so this is i3 is this line we're interested in so when we have r3 uh, the voltmeter reading is 1.9 volt and then the reading on the ammeter i is what 0 0.8 0 0.8 and then the total resistance in the circuit will be rt is equals to r3 plus rp right uh we have sort of calculated rp in 10.5 we know that it's 2.4 ohms right so we have rg being equals to uh, rs which is the resistance series that's r3 right so r3 uh, plus 2.4 ohms so we can use vt is equals to it multiplied by rt to essentially find r3 right so we can say that uh, vt is equals to it multiplied by rt so what is vt 
Uh, we know that we have four cells, each with an EMF of 1.5 volts, right? So we have 1.5 multiplied by 4, which is equal to IT. Uh, for resistor 3, the current is 0 0.8, right? Uh, we get in it from our table. So we have 0 0.8. Um, this is supposed to be RT. This is supposed to be RT. 0 0.8 multiplied by R3 plus 2.4 right so um, let's divide both sides by 0 0.8 we're gonna get uh, 1.5 multiplied by 4 uh, that is 6 and then we divide by 0 0.8 uh, this will be equal to r3 plus 2.4 so we subtract 2.4 from both sides we get 6 divided by 0 0.8 minus 2.4 is equal to r3 so if you put that in your machine, uh, you will figure out that R3 is equal to 5.1 ohms, right? Uh, let's find the energy dissipated in resistor R4 in 10 seconds. So let's go and look at the information for R4. Uh, we're looking at the information from our graph, right? Is R4. So for R4, uh, we know that the reading on the voltmeter is 2.4 and then the reading on the ammeter is 1 ohms. So we can say that the current uh, 1 amps. So we can say that the current is 1 amps for resistor R4, right? Uh, but to calculate the energy, we know that P is equal to the work divided by the time. So the energy, which is W, is the power multiplied by the time, right? Uh, to calculate the power, we need at least two quantities from V is equals to I multiplied by R, right? If we have any two from those, then we can find uh, the power, ultimately find the work. So, uh, I want you to realize something here. Um, in series, Vt is equals to V1 plus V2 and so on, depending on the number of resistor combinations you have, right? So, we know fully well that the battery provides a voltage of 6 volts so vt is 6 and then at uh, r4 we know that the reading on v2 is 2.4 right so we're gonna have v of r3 plus 2.4 because the voltage is only being dissipated in two points in the parallel connection and in r3 right so 6 minus 2.4 will be equal to uh the voltage on r3 so the voltage on r3 will be 3.6 volts right so that is v of r3 so with that information we can then calculate we have v we have i we can then calculate the power and consequently uh, determine the energy dissipation so now we can say that uh, we know that the power is equal to v squared divided by r or oh, it's equal to V multiplied by R, or oh, it's equal to I squared multiplied by R. Uh, we have the current, right? And then we have the voltage, right? So we can use this formula here because we have the current and the voltage. So we can now say that uh, the energy will be equal to, uh, in place of P, here, we put in the voltage multiplied by the current, right? So we have 3.6 multiply by 1 uh, because our current is 1 right and then multiply by the change in time uh, which is said to be 10 seconds so 3.6 multiply by 10 is 36 and then the SI unit of energy is joules